Lord. Hallelujah. I give myself away. Yes. So you can use me. I give myself away. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, our Father and our Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, O oh Lord. We worship you. We adore you, Lord. We know that we are here only because of you, O oh Lord, that we have made it thus far only because of your grace, O oh Lord, not because we are better than anyone that is not, but because you have chosen us to be here, O oh Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration, O oh Lord. We pray that as you go, we go into your word, O oh Lord, that you will speak through me in the name of Jesus. That every ear under the sound of my voice shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. And we shall not go home the same way that we came. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. In Jesus' name. We may all be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Happy Koga Youth Anniversary Sunday. Let's give a round of applause to all our youth. To our youth leaders for putting together five days of programs. It is not easy, but we pulled it off successfully and it's only by the grace of God. Amen. And I would like to thank Mommy and Daddy Pastor for the opportunity to speak before you this morning and the entire leadership of Koga Cathedral. I thank you for this opportunity. I do not take this assignment lightly and I pray that God will give me the grace. Amen. Amen. So our theme for today is do not neglect your spiritual life. Can we say that again? And our biblical text is taken from Matthew 19. We will read 16 and 17. Matthew 19, verse 16 and 17. Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. So just to give us a bit of a backstory on Matthew 19, Matthew 19 details the teachings of Jesus Christ as he's walking through Judea. So him and the disciples, they're walking through, they run into a multitude of people, they're healing, they're performing miracles, the Pharisees are asking Jesus different questions, the disciples are asking Jesus different questions, and then all of a sudden this man comes to Jesus. And there are two important things that the Bible mentions about this man, that he's young and that he's rich. And he comes to Jesus and he asks him, how can I have eternal life, right? And you would think that someone that has these two things, that they would have everything, that they would be happy, they would be fulfilled, but he did not feel whole. He knew that there was something missing, and he wanted to find out how he could achieve eternal life. And our pastor who spoke on Friday, she, during her testimony, she mentioned the story of how she had a roommate and some friends, and they were all wealthy, they had all these things that you would expect would make someone happy. And she herself was jealous because she's from a poor background. She didn't get to go on these trips and do all these things. But she said one thing. None of these people were happy. They were miserable. They had all these money. They went on these trips. They enjoyed themselves. But they didn't, they weren't fulfilled, right? And there's nothing that they did, no matter how many trips they went on, no matter what it was that they bought, Whenever they came back in the quietness of their, of their own time, they were not happy. But she had Jesus Christ, and she was happy, right? She didn't have the money that they had, 
but she was saved, right? She had a spiritual life, and her happiness was unique from those that she thought had more than what she did, right? And that is why our spiritual life is so important. Our spiritual life is the most important aspect of who we are as human beings. Anything that you build in this physical world, it has to start with your spiritual life. And when your spiritual life is aligned, you will see that things begin to go easier for you. You have peace of mind, you have joy, you have success, you have all these things. You will still have all these things that the people in the world have, but you would have them better. And that is the difference between ordinary and extraordinary, amen? And there's so many different aspects of a spiritual life. I'll tell this story, my mom probably doesn't even remember. But I was in high school one time and I met this person and for some reason, and I don't know why, she was just so pretty to me, she had a nose piercing. And I was like, you know what? I think I want a nose piercing. She looks good. I want to look as cute as she is. So le let me see, maybe, you know, if I'd be at an air, pier you know, nose piercing. But of course, the nose piercing is not something you can do without anyone noticing. So I decided to catch my mom when she was in a good mood. We went shopping, we finished shopping. And I was like, oh, Ma, what do you think about nose piercing? She looked at me like, nose piercing? Where did that even come from? You know, she wasn't uh, upset, but she was just like curious, like, where did that come from? And I was like, oh, I just liked it. And she was like, oh, you don't need it. You're beautiful, this and that. Of course, I wasn't trying to hear. I just wanted my yes, but I knew I wasn't going to get the yes anyway. <laughs> but she was saying it, and I was like, okay. But then she said this one thing, and I've never forgotten it to this day. She said, do you know that everything you do in the physical affects your spiritual? Everything you do in the spiritual affects the physical. And once you gain that understanding, you will invest as much as you do in your physical life, in your spiritual life. Because there is life after this life. There is life after <laughs> death, right? So if you want the life after this, everyone says, Life is short, life is short, life is short, because there's more life after life. So you can only, and you can only live but so much of this life and enjoy but so much of this life without, you know, investing in your spiritual life. Even the things that you think you're enjoying, you enjoy them so much more when you have faith in God. When God is your end all, be all, you enjoy it way more, if that makes sense. Are we, are we with me? Okay. So let's look again at Jesus' response to the young man. Jesus replies to the young man, but if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments, meaning there is more to life, right? And then from verse 18 onward, Jesus starts to go over the Ten Commandments. And I want us, especially as youth, to look at the Ten Commandments as a guide, as a how-to, right? If you want to become a CEO, let's say all your life, You've dreamed about, oh, I want to be like the person that owns Apple or that owns Microsoft, uh, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. And one day, you're walking, and you bump into Bill Gates, and he's like, okay, this is the book that I followed step by step to achieve my success. And if you follow these steps, you will achieve the same success that I have or even greater, right? So if you're someone that wants to achieve that success, you would follow that guide, right? Because Bill Gates, when you think of wealth, you think of fortune, you think of technology, you think of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. They're household names, right? So you would want to follow what it is that they're saying because you know that the end result is going to be greatness, right? Are we following me? Okay, so that is how we need to view the Ten Commandments. Sometimes as children of God, as youth, especially when we're born and raised in the church, it is easier for us to be more lazy with our spiritual life. And what I mean by that is because we've already had this path set out for us before we were even born, like some, of course, some of us before we were even born, they were already praying for us. When we were conceived, they prayed for us. When we were born, they prayed for us. And then as soon as you can talk, you're reading the Bible, you're performing, you're singing, you're involved in church. And most of this is not by your choice, right? When you're young, your parents are the ones saying, you have to do this, you have to do that. But at some point in time, you have to make that decision that I want to have that relationship with God. I want it to be me, and I want it to be God, right? There's no one else that is in between that relationship once it is formed. It's just you and just God. 
your no matter what your parents say or whoever you may look up to, your mentor, your pastor, when you have that direct line to God, it is a different transformation. You're doing things because you want to do them for God, not because you're scared, oh, my mom is going to yell at me, or, you know, if I don't go, I know pastor is going to text me, like, where are you? <laughs> And all those things, you go because you want to be there. You have fun there. I was telling one of the youth yesterday, I said most of my closest friends are from church. And we hang out outside of church. We do things together, and it's a different environment when you are, f when you are close with people that are also grounded in church and in Christ. Because when we go out there, we know ourselves, right? And we have a responsibility for each other. We look out for each other. And we know like, okay, we're not gonna go to this place because we don't do what they're doing or this and that. And we're able to do that collectively as a unit because we have our spiritual lives and we are able to connect with each other through our spiritual lives. Am I making sense? Yes. Okay. Jesus never said it would be easy. He never said, okay, if I give you this guide, your life is set, don't need to worry about anything else. Just follow the guide, it'll be easy. Devil won't even bother you. He never said that, but at the same time, there is nothing that doesn't come without certain things, right? Even if you want to be, let's even put aside Christianity for a second. No matter what it is you want to be in life, there are things that you can do and that you can't do because you have a goal that you want to achieve, right? So if we look at our spiritual life that way and we follow the Ten Commandments, then we're able to implement it in our daily lives, right? We're not looking at the commandments as restrictions. We're not looking at it as like, okay, I'm a Christian, so now I can't have fun anymore because I can't do this and I can't do that, right? So we're looking at these things. <laughs> we're looking at these things as a guide to being better every single day. So let us go through the commandments. The first one says, thou shalt not have no other gods before me. So the staple of your Christian life is God. If you don't believe in God, if all your faith is not in God, if everything that you believe is not God, then you can't even form your spiritual life because that's where it starts, right? It starts with that faith in God. It starts with that belief in God. Without that, you have nothing. And I tell people that all the time when they're like, oh, you know, you're this, you're that, you're lawyer, you're great. I was like, honestly, I couldn't do it without God. Right, I can't, there's nothing that I could have achieved or done in my life without God. And gods can take the form of many different things, right? Gods can be things on earth that you worship. There can be things that you really love to do that if you're not careful, they can take you away from God. They can have an effect on your spiritual life. I use myself as an example. I love to shop. I love to do my hair, to get my nails done, all these things. And my friends always like, oh my gosh, you're always shopping, you're always this. But I made up my mind when I started working that no matter what, as soon as I get paid, the first thing I do is pay my tax, right? Because I know that when I start, <laughs> I know when I start shopping, you know what I mean? I may overspend here and there, all this, but, I, but at least I know that I have given God what God is owed right? Yes. So this is now my money. I don't count what, when my tithe is included, it's not mine because it's for God. But at least I know that I've given God that respect. I've thanked him because without him, I would not have this job, right? I would not be able to shop. I would not be able to look nice, do all these things. So the least I can do is give him what he's owed. So that is an example, but it can be anything for anyone. And, you know, I'm not saying don't enjoy the good things of life or, you know, anything like that. But just be cognizant of what it is that you're enjoying and make sure that it is aligned with your spiritual life. That is not taking away anything from your spiritual life. Amen? Amen. The next one says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. This is an emphasis on the first commandment, right? Meaning don't worship idols. Idols can be tangible things, intangible things, anything that takes away your focus from God and being a child of God can be an idol, right? Does that make sense? Yes. 
They can take the forms of vices, just like I said, it can be shopping, it can be your phone, it can be the internet, it could be social media, it can be even traveling. Anything that you start to worship that you feel like you cannot do without it, it has become an idol in your life, right? It's become a god in your life. So we have to remember to keep our focus aligned on our spiritual life. Amen. Amen. The next one, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Do not joke with your spiritual life, right? God's name is not meant to be something that we just use anyhow, right? Sometimes people get into a situation and say, oh, I swear to God, I swear to God, I didn't do it. And they did it, but they'll be swearing to God like, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. It's not something we should keep as the way that we speak because God swearing on God's name is a big, is a very big deal. And ever since I was young, I've always known there is power in the tongue. And the things that you say have an effect on you later on. In that moment, you may not be thinking it, but sometimes you say certain things and it's like you might as well be swearing an oath or making a covenant because you're using God's name in what you're saying. Amen? Amen. 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 Our next one is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We worship the Sabbath day on Sundays. So if you have been coming to church, you know every Sunday you worship God. This is where you're supposed to be. You're familiar with it. But that doesn't mean that Sundays are the only days that are relevant in our Christian life. Every day should be relevant in your Christian life, right? Throughout the week, whatever you do, even if it's the smallest thing, it could be praise and worship, you know, on your way to work and you're singing. You connected with God outside of just being in the church, right? In our generation, we've become so great at using social media to our advantage, right? If they can use social media to promote all these worldly things, what's stopping them from using social media to promote the gospel, right? To promote the word of God. So no matter what it is that you do or what you use, you can always find a way to connect to God. Amen? Amen. This next one, oh, I like this one. Honor thy father and thy mother. <laughs> As youth, sometimes it is hard for us to see what our parents see. And sometimes they do and say certain things, and you don't understand why. And you just think that they just want to ruin your life. They don't want you to have fun. Oh, they, like, it's like, why did you bring me here if you don't want me to have a good time, right? It's like, what is the point? But sometimes we have to look beyond just that moment of fun. And there's a lot of times that our parents say or do things, and in the moment we're upset because we can't maybe go somewhere or do And then we end up realizing, like, oh, wow, it's a good thing I didn't do that, or it's a good thing I didn't go. And we probably would never go back to our parents and be like, oh, you were right, by the way. But at least to us, in our minds, and our mental we're keeping those lessons with us, you know? And of course, sometimes our parents are not perfect. They're also human. They may not always, you know, say things the best way, or it may not always come out the right way in that moment, but they always mean well. That is the basis of it. They always mean well. And our next one is thou shalt not kill. Of course, we have the physical kill, but we also have spiritual kill, right? Like I said, there's power in the tongue. So the things you say, the things that you do, to your, the things that you say primarily to yourself and to others, you can kill your spirit, you can kill someone else's spirit, right? You say, oh, I'm too young, I'm too old, I can't do that, I can't do this, what's the point? I'm not smart enough. The pastor on Friday, when given her testimony, she said all she ever did all she ever got her whole life was criticism. Everyone told her she wasn't good enough, she was supposed to be a boy, she was useless, all these things. And those things, she kept them inside of her, right? Because her spiritual life at that point was not strong enough. It wasn't built because it wasn't between her and God. It was just built by the fact that she was a pastor's daughter. And she was just going to church to fulfill an obligation, right? But then when she was forced to now form that connection with God and she saw God herself, her mind shifted, it changed. So regardless of what everyone was saying, she was telling herself like, you are worth more than this. No matter what anyone is saying, you can do anything that you put your mind to, no matter what it is that you've been through in life, there, God still loves you, no matter what. He loves me just as much as he loves the richest, most beautiful person in the world. 
right? We are all the most beautiful person in the world to God because he made us in his image, amen? And she said all these thoughts, they stuck with her to the point where, you know, she was thinking of taking her life and all these things. And that is a spirit, that means that her spirit was already killed before she was making the decision to kill in the physical, if that makes sense. So if you are building your mind mentally, emotionally, it's no way that it's not going to manifest in the physical. And Olivia's mom gave an example about how if you go to the gym and you're sweating, the more you sweat, the more you sweat, you'll start to see it physically, right? So what you do inside, it always will reflect on the outside. Amen? And thou shall not commit adultery. That is the next one. As youth, for those of us who are unmarried, that would be fornication. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have to protect yourself, whether male or female. And I want the youth to really understand this. Whether you are a man or a woman, it is the same. God holds us to the same standard, right? It is not okay for men to sleep around and women to not sleep around or anything like that. God holds us to the same standard no matter what society says. When we all get in front of God, he, we're going to have to account for what we did on this earth. So keeping your body holy, your temple holy, and people, different people bring different spirits to you, right? They bring different, you know, auras or we call them vibes. Our generation calls them vibes, right? They bring these different things to you. Vibes, sorry. <laughs> we call them vibes. Uh, so they bring these things, and you can feel when someone has negative energy. And so imagine now you're doing things with this person that you're not supposed to be doing, and you're taking these, these energies, these vibes from this person, you know, all these things into your body. It's naturally going to affect your spiritual life, right? And you may not even realize it at first or at second thought, but then it starts to have that effect. And then you start wondering, why am I going through these things? What's happening? What's happening? But then you get connected to your spiritual life, and God is showing you, like, okay, well, this is what it was. This is what happened. So it's the best in our, for our sake to keep our body holy. And as the ministers were saying this week, this relationship, this spiritual life between you and God, it is for our benefit. God doesn't get, if you decide to, he'll, you know, be sad. He's like, okay, you know, I want you to work for me, but if you decide not to, God is still in heaven enjoying himself. <laughs> He's living good. He doesn't, it doesn't really like, it, you're the only person that's going to benefit from that relationship tremendously. And I remember I went on an uh, interview one time and I was talking to someone and I told her like, oh, she was like, okay, what kind of law are you interested in? I said corporate law and stuff. She was like, oh, you know, like a lot, you know, you're a woman and you're a black woman, corporate law, it's really busy. You know, if you decide that you might not get married, you might not have kids. All these things. And I don't even know where it came from, but I was like, my case is not your case. And I, this was an interview. <laughs> and, I mean, needless to say, I didn't get the job, but that's fine. <laughs> but I don't even, I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking when I said it. It just came out. And I was just like, you know, God is in control. That's all I can say. Like, I wasn't going to argue. If that's what you've accepted for your life, if that is what your spirit is telling you is yours, then that is yours, but that is not mine. Be just because it's maybe other people's case doesn't mean it's my case. Amen? Amen. The next one, thou shalt not steal. Do not take what doesn't belong to you. E it may not necessarily be the physical, or I go to the store and I take these bags of chips, you know, and I walk away. There's more, there can be more than that. You know, if your parents say, no, don't take that or do that, and you're like, I'm going to just take it and put it back before they come back. They won't know it was there, right? You, you technically still disobeyed, and you stole it, but you put it back. Just because you put it back doesn't necessarily negate the fact that you took it when you weren't supposed to, right? So you're, everyone has their own time. Your time will come. Whatever it is that you want, whatever it is that you want to do, that iPhone, those shoes, whatever it is that you want, you're going to get it, no matter what. Right? And in that moment, it may seem like, wow, everyone has this. Why don't I have it? But by the time you have it, you have the newest version. You have the best version. You just have, you just have to be patient for your turn. Right? And just make sure that you are focused on yourself and nobody else. Once you start worrying about what everybody else is doing, you just see that things start to work for you. Because you're focused on yourself. When you're focused on someone else, you get distracted. Because you're like, damn, I'm, you're, you're praying, but you're thinking like, man, this girl just got this new car, man, come on. God. Like, 
you, you even probably stop praying because you're so upset. You're like, nah, nah, I have to go look for this car, man. This, this is ridiculous. I need my own, you know what I mean? But if you are focused on God and your relationship, there's nothing that you won't achieve in this world. There's nothing that you won't gain in this world. Amen? Amen. The next one is, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Do not lie. Thou shalt not lie. That is what that's, if no matter how hard the truth may be, it is always better to be true and to be true to who you are also, right? Because if people know who you are earlier on in, in your life and you make that stance with people, like Loni was saying during the week, once you make that stance with people, you don't even have to be the one to be like, to lie to them or say, oh, I can't come because of this or that. They won't even ask you. You know, they won't even try to put you in situations because they know, ah, this one, nah, just, just leave her alone. She don't, she don't do all of that. She's not, or he doesn't do all of that. You know what I mean? They would just leave you be. And you can now, you focus on yourselves and you'll be close with the people that are also like-minded and that are on the same spiritual level as you are. Amen? Amen. And you will also be able to connect to people that, it's important to have people that are even at a deeper spiritual level than you because you have something to yearn for. You have something to grow, right? And so people always say, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? Because at that room, you're at the top. There's nowhere else to go. But if you have people that are already at a certain spiritual level you, that you want to attain, it makes you work harder. But if you're the one in your group that all, you're the only one that wants to pray or you're the only one that wants to go to church, eventually it'll start to have an effect on you. You probably, like, oh, maybe I'm doing too much. You know, maybe it's not. You know, maybe it's not the cool thing to do. Let me just, you start to kind of sneak away a little bit from it. Like, okay, I won't go to church this week. Let me just. But if you have someone that's like, hey, I'm going to church. Are you coming? And you're like, uh, at least if you have people or that person that is spiritually connected, you even start to be like, no, no, I'm going to go. Yes, yeah, yeah, we'll go together. As opposed to it's just you, right? And you're the only one in that group that feels or think that way. So I really want to emphasize the importance of friendship within the church, especially to our youth. I want us to be more connected with people in the church. And our last one is, thou shalt not covet. Be content. Always be content. Because no matter what it is that you are going through or what is happening in your life, there's someone out there that is going through worse, but they are still grateful to God, right? The fact that you woke up this morning, that you came to church, most of us probably came in nice cars to church. There are people that have been sleeping outside on the streets in this heat, right, with nothing. And we go home, and sometimes we, we go back to our house or, you know, anyone's house, and we, we can decide from 100 different things to eat. Why? Because we have the money to do so. We have the luxury to do so, right? And it's so easy for us to forget these things sometimes, to take them for granted. But when you're rooted in your spiritual life, you're always grateful. You're always content. Because you know, even if it's not right now, it's going to come. It's going to be there. You're going to see it. When I first started school, I could not imagine that I would be where I am right now. But I had a vision for myself. I had a vision that was greater than what anyone else could see because I knew that God had a plan for me. Amen? So I want us, like I said, to look at these Ten Commandments as a guide to your spiritual life. It is not meant to stop you from enjoying your life. It doesn't mean that as a young person, you can't love God and also have fun. You can have fun in God, you can have fun with God, amen? You just have to create that direct line to God. Don't go through anything else and create that line by yourself when you want to, at, that at the time you make that decision, right? It no longer becomes a decision that they made for you when you were born or when you were young, it now becomes something that you want to do. And we all know that when, we want, when you want to do something, you do it way better than when someone is forcing you to do it, right? When you make up your mind like, okay, this is something that I want, these are my goals, sometimes no matter what anyone says, no matter what anyone does, you've set your mind like, I have to accomplish this, I have to do this. So I want us to look at these commandments and use them every day. It can be in the smallest of ways, but if you remember, like, okay, thou shalt not have any other God, all right? I've been doing this thing too much. Let me just, t you know, take a break from it a little bit, give it a little bit of a break before it starts to become all I think about, all I want to do. I think, and it, and it, it's not necessarily like these things are bad, 
or anything like that, but in moderation, as they say, and it should never take you away from God. Amen? Amen. Let us rise. I just want to say, Father, oh, thank you. I just want to say, Father, oh, thank you. I just want to say, I just want to say, Father, prayer point. Father, O oh Lord, we pray that you will give us the grace, O oh Lord, that you give us the power to never neglect our spiritual life. In the name of Jesus, let us pray.